Hello. In this video, we are going to derive an expression for the ratio of two concentrations as a result of two parallel reactions. Specifically, X is converted into Y with a first order rate constant K1. We are going to assume that this reaction is first order. Also, X can convert into Z with first order rate constant K2. We're assuming this is going to be a first order rate constant. Furthermore, we're going to assume that we begin with the initial quantities of Y and Z are going to be zero. Let us calculate the rate of change of the concentration of X. Since it's first order, with rate constant K1, we have that the change in the concentration of X with respect to time is equal to minus K1 times the concentration of X. But that is only one of the possible pathways. We also are losing X with rate constant K2 as it is converted into Z. So the total change in the concentration of X with respect to time is going to be minus K1 times the concentration of X minus K2 times the concentration of X. We can make the assignment that K is equal to K1 plus K2. So effectively, we replace the two rate constants by a single one. And now we have that the change in the concentration of X is simple equal to minus K times the concentration of X, where this K here is still a first order rate constant. We can take our relationship for the change in the concentration of X per unit time, multiply each side by minus DT, and divide each side by the concentration of X, we end up separating the variables to get this expression, which we can then integrate. Now, assuming that time begins at zero and the concentration of X at that time is concentration of X sub zero, we integrate from the initial concentration of X to the concentration of X, dx over X, and we integrate minus k dt between the limits of zero and time t. Recalling that the integral of 1 over x is the natural log of x, and the uh, integral of minus k dt is just going to be minus kt, so we get our integrated version of the expression here, the natural log of x minus the natural log of x sub 0 is equal to minus kt. As a result, we get the useful result for us that the concentration of x at any time is equal to the initial concentration of x, x of 0, times e to the minus kt. So we have an exponential decreasing function starting at 1 and going to infinity, going to 0 at infinity. Since x is converted into y with rate constant k1, the rate of formation of y per unit time is equal to the rate constant k1 times the concentration of x. Then we sub simply substitute our expression for the concentration of x at any time into our expression here and get that the rate of formation of y is going to be k1 times the concentration of x of 0 times e to the minus kt. And notice that while here x is a variable, over here x sub 0 is a constant. Now we simply multiply each side of the equation by dt, d, the concentration of y, is equal to k1 times the initial concentration of x times e to the minus kt dt. And this is really important because now on the right hand side we have things that are a function of t or that are constants. So we've actually separated t to the right hand side and the concentration of y to the left hand side. So now we can solve it as a separable differential equation. So if we integrate between 0, the initial concentration of y, and the concentration of y, dy, we simply just get the concentration of y on the left hand side. The right hand side is more complicated because k1 times the concentration of x of 0 is a constant. So we have the integral of e to the minus kt dt. This is the integral of e to the u du, so we need this minus k in front, and we end up with e to the minus k t, and we're evaluating between the limits of 0 and t, and here I'm going to do that step next. 
Notice that we have a minus k in the denominator, which is a little tricky, so let's try to get rid of that at the same time we're evaluating uh, e to the minus kt between these limits. The minus sign will have the effect of switching the limits, so let's write k instead of minus k, and now we'll evaluate this limit first at 0. e to the minus 0 is simply going to be 1. And then finally, we're going to evaluate at this point, at t, that's going to give us e to the minus kt at t. So now we have our expression for the concentration of y at any time after t equals 0. And we have this k1 times the concentration of x sub 0 over k times just 1 minus e to the minus kt expression. And if you look at this carefully, you'll notice, as it has to be, the concentration is always 0 or positive. It's never negative. That's important. Our second and final product is Z. It is formed uh, from X with a first order rate constant K2, and we can make exactly the same sort of uh, substitution that we did in the case of Y for Z. We're substituting the expression for the concentration of X at any time. So now we get that the change in the concentration of Z is going to be K2 times the concentration of x initially times e to the minus kt. As we did before, we can multiply each side by dt, and now we have the left-hand side is completely a function of z, z, and on the right-hand side is completely a function of t, so we have a separable differential equation, and as before, we can integrate between the limits of 0 and the current time. The left-hand side is straightforward. We get the concentration of Z. And on the right-hand side, we have our constant we pull in front. Now it's K2 times the concentration of X sub 0 minus K times E to the minus KT evaluated between T 0 and T. Again, we're going to try to get rid of the minus sign and uh, save ourselves some work in the process. We, uh, multiplying by minus 1 has the effect of reversing the limits of integration. So therefore... Now we get that Z is going to equal to K2 times the concentration of X sub 0 divided by K, and then times this 1 minus E to the minus KT expression. So now we have expressions for the concentration of Y and for the concentration of Z. So let's see how those are related. If we list our expressions for the concentration of Y and the concentration of Z after the time T equals 0, we see that the two expressions, though complicated, look very, very, very similar. And even more similar when they're put right next to each other. We can take the ratio of y to z, so long as t is not equal to 0, because in that case, um, so long as t is not equal to 0, the denominator will not be 0, so we can legitimately divide. And we notice just how similar the two expressions are, that we can cancel virtually every single thing in the expression. And then we're left with our final result, the ratio of the concentrations of y to z, so long as we're not at time t equals 0, is simply k1 divided by k2. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Please stay safe out there, and as always, have a good one.